Hello, my name is Chris Webb and I'm Associate Director of Development and Crisis Communication here at Crest Advisory. Today I'm going to talk to you about effective crisis communications. When disaster or a crisis strikes, it can often be extremely daunting and challenging for organisations. But what lets them down is their ability to respond to a crisis effectively. How many of you have effective crisis communication plans in place? I'm sure that most of you will say that you have. But if you look at the world of technology, it is moving at such a pace with developments in different social media and digital media platforms. So if your plans were not reviewed or updated in the last six months, the reality is, I'm afraid, that they are not fit for purpose. Now disasters or crises come in many different guises, but one thing you can be certain of, they will always follow the same pattern. A pattern that is often referred to as the three M's. So what do I mean by that? The three M's, mayhem, mastermind, and manhunt. The first M, mayhem. Those initial few minutes, few hours, where people are trying to find out what's going on, where the media are trying to find eyewitness accounts, where information is being posted on different social media platforms, where the organisation itself is trying to get to grips of actually what is going on here. The second M is mastermind. What has gone wrong? How has it gone wrong? What on earth has happened? Now we've all seen the so-called experts wheeled out and plonked into newsrooms at the media, at television studios to give their views and opinions of actually what has caused this disaster. And the third M is manhunt. Who was responsible? Because both the public and the media will want to hold somebody to account. Somebody has to be responsible for what has gone wrong here and how this disaster has occurred they will effectively want to scout. But understanding how the response is likely to unfold will help you be able to put in effective community communication plans for actually dealing with it. Now, crisis communication response will encompass different areas from news media to social media, to engagement with partners and stakeholders, even to engagement with our own staff through effective internal communications. But one thing that I've noticed over the years, something that has fundamentally changed the response to a crisis or disaster, is social media. Effectively, social media now has redefined the boundaries to a response to a, to a crisis and disaster. So what are the successful steps to actually managing a crisis? Well, there are a number. Timing is everything. Time is no longer on your side. At the height of a disaster or a crisis, information both on news channels and on social media is actually changing every 30 seconds. Now if organisations, if we're not able to respond to that, that changing environment, then we're constantly being on, going to be on the back foot. So you should actually aim to get statements onto your website or other digital media platforms within 15 minutes. And those statements should be reg regularly updated every 15 minutes. Own the conversation. Become the trusted voice of the emergency response. Give people confidence in your organisation. Become that authoritative voice, the trusted voice where people can turn to for the latest details and the latest information about what's happening. Designated source. Now, most organisations have a variety of digital and social media platforms that they will use to post information. And trying to update all of those is a challenge. So just use one. It might be your website. Then use your other digital and social media platforms to signpost people to that one source of information. Call to action. This is often where an organization falls down. It's all very well telling people what is happening, but people need to be told what I should do. How should I behave? What do you want me to respond? How do you want me to respond? Um, and this is where often organisations will actually fall over by not giving that call to action. Don't lash out. What do I mean by that? Well, often at the height of a disaster, there'll be lots of information being exchanged, especially on different social media platforms. Remember the rule of three. Three is a conversation. More than three is an argument. Do not get into an argument, especially on social media. 
put in place a release valve where people, if people have got criticisms or are feeling aggrieved, they can go and post information. You can direct them to that release valve where they can actually go and put that information online. Now underpinning all of this, there needs to be a clear and effective communication strategy. That strategy is not just a job for communications, it needs to be owned by the organisation. It needs to be owned by the board. It should actually look at different ways of working, be it from delivering news media, social media, engagement with stakeholders and opinion formers, to engagement with your own staff. It should show where you fit into the wider response. With disasters and crises, we often work in silos, but what we need to bear in mind is that we will be part of a number of organisations that are responding to the disaster itself. Now that could be the police, it could be the other emergency services, it could be um, different statutory agencies, local authority, even central government. But your organisation needs to understand and know where it fits into that bigger response. Your plan should be flexible, they should be reviewed on a regular basis and they should be updated. I'm a great believer in something called hot debriefs. What's a hot debrief? A hot debrief is where you get your staff together at the end of the day and you debrief what's happened, what went well, what needs to change or what could we do to better tomorrow. Don't wait until the end of the process before you actually embark on any sort of debrief. You need to actually debrief and learn lessons as you go along. And actually that will help you deliver a much, much more effective and better response. I just want to leave you with one final piece of information, an adage that I'm really passionate about. Failing to plan is planning to fail. If your organisation fail, fails to plan, then your organisation will fail to deliver. I hope you found this information useful. You can find out more information about me and about Crest Advisory by visiting our website, crestadvisory.com. Thank you.